I I wanted to uh, take a moment now to explain exactly how all of this um, all of this stuff works. Uh, before the system wasn't really at a level where I felt comfortable demonstrating it, so I didn't. So uh, now I feel like it's more of a system now. There's certain structures in it that are going to stay the same way through iterations of the design. So I feel pretty comfortable that this is the system now. Um, the last uh, six or seven months I've been developing the software so uh, and the synthesizers and the loopers and the other stuff that go into it. So now it's uh, a bit more uh, focused on what I want to do with it. So uh, Beat Jazz at its simplest is uh, live looping and sound design and uh, jazz improv. That's the, the simplest. But uh, I mainly made it because I got tired of playing like this, so I decided to have this kind of stuff going on. Right? But there's a lot of uh, extra stuff in here now. The um, the sensors that this uses are these things here. These are called force sensing resistors. And you can see there on the screen that it's making that it's making this uh, this one here move up and down when I push it. See? And each one of them do that. So when I so when I uh, hold my hand up here like this, you can see all of them move. And you can also see it on my visualization here. Um, there's an accelerometer in there under each hand. So you can see that blue dot there. When I move my hand, it moves back and forth, also moves up and down. So that gives me a lot of control. I'm, I set it up so that it would, so that it would, so that my, I would hold my hand mostly like, uh, like this, you know, instead of, instead of like straight like this, more of like a, a pointing motion kind of thing. Um, and that was so that it would feel more natural while I would play it. Uh, and there are joysticks. There's one underneath here. This moves. So when I, so you can see here that if I, um, that if I move my finger, you can see that it clicks and it goes forward and backward. It's the same type of joystick as the one here. And it's just, that's at an angle so that it's easy for my hand to interact with it. Now, the other part of the system is the headset. That's this. Mine's a little bit different. Uh, I've added headphones and uh, a belt pack in-ear system that I had laying around. So I decided just to incorporate it on the back here. Uh, that's the microphone. And this is also an Arduino. Just like the ones that are, just like the ones that are on the um, on the hand units, they all use these Arduino Theos, which I have rigged in there, and they're all communicating using a wireless transceiver called an RNXD, made by a company um, called Roven. I have them in what's known as UDP mode, which means that it's just broadcasting data right now, so it's just streaming data to the wireless router that I have. And all of that is coming into this patch. Let me show you here. So this is pure data, by the way. This is a, uh, an open source uh, uh, software for creating whatever you want, actually. And here, this is uh, this is where my sensor data is coming in, and this is how I have it receiving it. You see, so it comes in uh, to this UDP object here and it's coming out here and it's using this drip object to send it to the rest of the system. So with that, um, the data is, you know, it's it can be, you know, touchy when it's when you're dealing with um, if you have a place that's got a lot of wireless transmitters or whatever. Um, besides the one that you're using, but that's the reason for the node system that I'm designing so that I can keep the wireless um, 
routing system close, and then I can send an already composed um, wireless signal to somewhere else. But that's another video. So um, on this, there are two pressure sensors. One is here. Have it kind of glued in there, right there. And the other one is right here. You can see it. It's and I have them kind of both on the same tube. One is for inhaling and one is for exhaling. So when I breathe in, I can do things. When I breathe out, I can do certain things. So, and uh, it's very stiff. I, I uh, used uh, these, uh, you know, hardware components from the hardware store to make it, to, to kind of give it this build quality. So that goes on. Like that. So it locks on. And in here, there is a force sensing resistor, just like the ones that are in the hand units. So if you look here, let me close this. If you look here, you can see that when I bite down there, that sends, uh, that's sending uh, data to the system that I can use for musically relevant stuff, right? So now the software system is actually three pieces of software at the same time. I have the network together. You have, uh, let me see here. This is the visuals patch. This is where uh, all the visualizations get done. Now this is the order that they're being opened. So if you go to the GitHub and download this stuff, uh, this is how you need to open it so that it'll work. Uh, the Beat Jazz Viz 1, I'll rename this something better later. But um, this is where all the visualization stuff happens. So all the looping visualizations, all of this stuff is here in this video. I mean in this, uh, in this patch. All the, uh, so everything that happens in the rest of the system comes here to get interpreted into visual data. Right? Uh, the next one is this one. Now this one is the one that does the most work. This is the, uh, this is the looper patch. This one uh, does everything else. Bes uh, all the synthesis, all the uh, looping, everything is in here. Um, each of these is one of the elements. So like for instance, I come here and I press this, it sends me to element 5, and inside element 5, as with the rest of the elements, is what I call a gesture grid. So that means that if I do this, which puts me in edit mode, and then I do this, you can see here that it's varying parameters, and then I can let that go, and it'll stay there. this gestural trajectory synthesis so it because the trajectory of the gestures going out towards the end of the hand is uh, kind of the point it's like I do this and then I do this and then I do this and I do this and I can find or create any kind of sound I want depending on the parameters that I've assigned to stuff so and inside the synth is not particularly that amazing I have uh, different synths that I've uh, gotten from different places on the internet. Some of them I've built, some of them I've hacked. You know, just I'm just testing. I'm still testing the synths right now. I have a methodology for it, but uh, it's going to be another few months before it's complete. But right now, these are my basic sounds. Right. So each of these uh, has those has has those capabilities. Uh, the the uh, the voice patch is interesting because it um, let's see, make sure it's working one two check 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 one two okay well I guess it's not working but um, each one has its own capability and then in here this is the looping system 
Now inside here is where all of the uh, magic happens. Everything gets dumped into here and uh, everything gets dumped into here and each of these is uh, a looper. So each different element has its own looping system. I'll open one of these. And each of these dumps into shrink that a bit. Dumps into its own table and uh and um is recorded. So there's eight different ones of these, except actually the um the one for the resampler, which is where the transform happens. This is where um, this is where the really crazy uh, type stuff happens, and I'll show you in just a second, or in the second video, because I think this um, recording software is going to shut me off at 15 minutes, and I think it's going to take at least 30 minutes. So uh, this one's actually stereo, so uh, that's where I'm able to have my the things that I do where both hands are active, you know, so I can have all of that going. Close that. And then the, the final one, which is the most important one, is the uh, sensor interpretation interface. This is where all the sensor information comes in. And you can see that everything is represented. Now, from this point, you can see that I have lights that are associated with different functions. I can show you better from the other instance here. Each, each, uh, each key is assigned to one of these eight elements here. So when I hit, say, drum, <laughs> The light color changes, as does the the, uh, the color on the screen. Same with that. Same with that. Each one has its own, right? And from that, I can create uh, I can create my arrangement, and then using the edit mode, any sound. Let's say hey, I'm just gonna put it on. Let's say uh, I'm playing. Let's say that I'm playing, and I decide I want to go to drums, and then I just, and then I decide that I want to change that drum. Now the air, the, this here has changed to red to let me know that I'm in edit mode, and then I change it. Now, sounds are also assigned to uh, positions where my hand is. So I can go. Right? So that will conclude this first video. Now, when I come back, uh, when I come back, I will go into how each of these things is sequenced into an arrangement and then I'll play something and then we'll transform it into something else and uh, that will pretty much be a complete um, synopsis of what Beat Jazz is.